there, it's Kevin from RogueDeckBuilder.com here with game match number two in the Holiday Cube. I am on the draw here, and this is definitely not a mulligan hand. Uh, I did mulligan from seven to six, and this is a keep hand, so we would not like to mulligan. And play another blue deck. So we'll lead off here with the Land of Elves now, with, with a with a Taiga, of course, into a Land of Elves. And pass the turn to him. So we need to find that white source for the Merry Angel, the second white source. But other than that, this is a pretty good deck, or a pretty good hand. Uh, there is our dude that will go grab us our other white source. So yeah, we'll play. We'll play the knight, and hopefully he sticks around long enough to get us that second white source. So another black blue deck. So we beat out the first black blue deck. This is probably the other black blue that remains in um, the eight man cube. Impulse is fine. He's floating a black. So hopefully not like a I don't know what could kill. Oh, so he's floating two black. Hopefully not a terror. But double black, there's a ton of things in this cube that can actually kill. Alright, a grave ro grave robber. Next I'll target card from opponent's card. If no cards are in that in or in a, in that graveyard, flip it. Alright, he's a pain in the butt. Maybe we'll just end up rift bolting him this turn instead. I think I will do that. Um Well, and we can still sack the forest after we use it. So we'll go ahead, rift bolt. The Grave Robber. Uh, da, 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 da. And yeah, attack with the, the land or else. And during his turn, we'll, we will we'll kill off our forest to go get a second white source for a Merry Angel. Three colors. All right, what are you doing? He's ramped up pretty good. Search target opponent's library for your creature card and put the card under un, onto the battlefield under your control. That would have worked very well versus last dude. I do have some decent um, creatures that he can grab. He will probably go grab the siege game command. No, his siege game doesn't work for him. He'll. I have no clue what he'll grab here. So I'll kill the forest and go grab a... I can grab any land here, huh? So probably the best land here, of course, is the Sacred Foundry. No. Knights of 3-3 three, three now. And I don't know what he'll grab. Huntmaster... Good thing Inferno Titan's not. I cut it. And now it definitely is not coming in versus him. And Mary Angel would be a great card for him, but it's already in. Yeah, so I knew it was between the Master of the Wild Hunt or Hunt Master. And neither one of those hurt me too bad. I uh, hope I can rip a, a lightning bolt off the top. Uh, just a Loam Lion. But we'll cast this a Mary, a Mary Angel. I mean, wow, yeah. Master of the Wild Hunt is going to get out of control unless I can find an answer for him. We'll go ahead, kill this Carpulsion Forest. Yeah, it is other brushlands, but that's no, that's our double white source. Red, red, green, green. Yeah. Oh, sacrifice a, a plains or a forest. So maybe we don't want to kill our, our sacred foundry. We don't need a dub, another double white, though, for a while. Uh, or Taiga. Red, red, green, green, white, white. Yeah, Taiga is the best one to kill. So green, 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 red, red, white, white. And maybe this Treetop Village? Is that the best one to put in? Yeah, cause it comes in a play tapped, right? Oh, it just comes on the battlefield. So we can we can do a Plains here. And cast that Qu Quasali Pride Mage. Okay. 
Yes. And cast the Pride Mage. So he does get a 2-2, a one of our wolves. Taking our master. What a jerk. And he could tap one wolf to kill off. Can't kill my Knight of the Real Inquiry. Can't kill my Merry Angel. Aww. He kills off the ultimate prices the Merry Angel, which is too bad because that guy was going to get out of control, out of control. And let's see what he does here with the, he's got a morph card, which I have no clue what it is. Maybe I should check the deck list and see what morph cards are available. What morph card do we see going around? I don't remember. Bane of the Living. Yeah, I remember, it probably is a Bane of the Living. I do remember that guy running around. All right. Wog, Mog War Marshal is not very good at this point. Um... I think all we do is just swing in there with our bird token. <laughs> our own master of the wild hunt is going to kill us. Which which sucks. Yep, and he does tap it to kill it. Sure. Before yeah, before the exalted triggers. And I think we just play the Lone Lion and the War Marshal. And maybe I should have tapped right there. And come on, school clamp off the top. I'm pretty sure that that could be a bane of living, but the bane of living actually hurts him now. This master of the wild hunt is going to get crazy. So, tap all untap wolf creatures control. Each wolf tapped this way deals damage equal to its power to target creature. Yeah, we can just in response kill this planes and it survives. And we'll go grab a treetop village. Or do we need to so green, green, white, white, red, red? We're still okay, so treetop village. I mean, I guess we could have gotten other planes too for the night of the rail inquiry, but. I like the treetop village here. So I don't know if one card in hand, I don't know what this this morph card is. Definitely not paying for a Mog War Marshal next turn. We'll just let it die. Kill off any enchantment that may come down. Or artifact. So yeah, I did, yeah, that, I knew that was a bane of living. All creatures get minus X minus X until it a turn. So the board is now wiped, and we're 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 off into we're up. We are basically into top deck mode now. And oh, so he keeps his yeah he keeps his master Ugh, master of the wild hunt and is his bane of the living, which is no good. I mean that that is a good card to draw, kind of good card to draw. We can swing for four here, but our own our own master is gonna kill us. I mean it might be something we take out. Um, next next game because it gives his bribery basically no really good targets so I need to rip a lightning bolt to get back in this game or a skull clamp that's decent but he's just gonna be able to kill off anything that I I put out um, I will play it though well, maybe would I save it for next turn? Do I save it for 
possibly casting two creatures. I don't think so for the Venge Vine, but I think we just we just ship it out, even though that Golem is going to die next turn. Skull Clamp's the only thing that really gets us back in this game. Or Lightning Bolt. Don't have any non-creatures, but yeah, now that counters the Skull Clamp. Yikes. Doesn't do much. Uh, he'll just counter it with his with his uh, Glen Alandra. No, he lets it because I guess in response he can he can kill anything. I don't I don't know if we even play this out. We don't have much time because I was AFK for the first nine minutes. Um, I think we're just gonna concede this and go on to the next game just to con just to. So I could have Bloodbraid Elfed into. In a coddle, wouldn't have done much. Then Elswith would have gone to bottom. Thornscape wouldn't have done anything. Yeah, Lightning Bolt was too far down by the time that these wolves are going to get out of, out of control and kill us. So I think the best, best, best play here is to get rid of any sort of bribery target that's any good, which is basically only a Merry Angel. And Master of the Wild Hunt, which we can both we can get both those out beforehand. Didn't see enough to make Chandra useful. I does kills his his, his uh, grave robber. He is playing islands, so I think that's going to come in for the Master of the Wild Hunt. As this, I don't know why I didn't side this in last time versus uh, the island person, but I think Master of the Wild Hunt's going to go out. Gives him horrible, horrible targets for bravery. Uh, bribery. Tinstry Hugan could come in. I kind of like it. We'll take a Merry Angel out. We're just, we're just going to go for... Oh, Merry Angel's just too good with, with uh, Skull Clamp, though. Um, so one card needs to come out. Maybe a Ranger. Maybe a Bloodbraid Elf. No, uh, Bloodbraid is awesome in this deck. Or maybe maybe a Mary Angel is the right play. Siege Gate Commander, is there anything worth it? It just takes over games by itself. What if take out the Siege Gate Commander and just go for a really aggressive draw? Ah, oh, I can't. This is too good with Skull Clan. Maybe Tin Street. He's got to have some art, art, artifacts, though. Maybe Huntmaster. Again, Huntmaster is just too powerful by itself. War and Peace, Girl Signet, Skull Clan, Loam, Blade Splicer, Ranger. Um. Huh. I I, I I'm gonna go with a either a lone line, a coddle, ranger. I'm gonna go with the blade splicer. No way. No way. No. No how. Too good. Huntmaster. Give him even less targets to grab. We're gonna go with the uh... <laughs> knight at Elspeth. Too good. War Marshal. Too good. Benjamin. Too good. Loam Lion, just a Loam Lion. We're on the play though. Fauna Shaman, Nakaddle, Wild Nakaddle, Cold Eye, Mary, Blaze Splash, Revenge Vine. We're gonna go with the Ranger. Ten seconds left. We'll play first. Um, decent hand, Girl Signet. We're not gonna mull this. We do need to get a double white source again. I don't know why we're having such a hard problem getting the double white. And pass the turn to him. Got a signet next turn. Hopefully we draw into another land. That's a pretty quick hunt master. There we go. So next turn we got a hunt master. Say, uh, third turn hunt master is not too shabby. Oh, then I got to worry about counter magic here. Nope, not anymore. Okay, when this enters the battlefield, return target permanent to its owner's hand. Okay, that's fine. It will get rid of a wolf. This can go get... Yeah, Sacred Foundry. Sure, we'll just take the damage here.
play a hunt master pass it back to him looking pretty good equipment would be awesome that's fine we might just let our hunt master flip um, no we won't that's amazing throw this on our hunt master might as well just tack he'll block he, he has to block the wolf here he can't block the sword and what does sword of light do Start creature charge and create our case. We'll we'll gain three life. It doesn't so the sword doesn't do anything right now. There is nothing to target. Hopefully we can get that other white source. That's not gonna hurt us too much. Return it to permanent. He'll probably turn his own wall almonds to draw another card. We're in a pretty good position here. He's got five cards in hand though. Okay. That hurts, but it, it that, that was just a, a one one for one kills the wall of almonds too. That's not too bad. Mountains something we didn't want to see. Uh, I guess we just go like this. And like that. And ship it back to him. And if we're able to So he, he can bounce that Sword of Light and Shadow, but it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, not that big of a deal. In fact, yeah, he should have actually probably uh, bounced the Pride Mage, because we can just play that Light and Shadow next turn on the Pride Mage and attack, and he'll be forced him to block it. Four cards in hand versus three card. Got a Rift Bolt to remove anything that's, that's uh, very annoying. He decides to attack with his... I guess we could have rift bolted. We could have suspended a rift bolt. But let's see what happens here. Play the sword, light, and shadow. See if it gets countered. Impulse. Okay, that's fine. See, no counter spell. Manage your encounter spell at the beginning of your next main phase at X, where the X is the converted mana cost. Unfortunate. Wow, that is amazing. Whoa, that's so much better than even a counter spell, a regular counter spell. All right, sure. Uh, I guess we just swing in there with our Pride Mage. Got two burn spells in hand. Down to 13. On his main phase. What what a nutty card that mana drain is. Huh. <laughs> crazy, crazy good. Okay, Shriek Ma. So we could lightning bolt our own Pride Mage here. But I mean I guess that'd be pointless. Okay. So did he evoke it? No, he cut he played it with his there's nothing for us to kill, okay? Three cards, three cards. Uh, need that white source for our Merry Angel. So basically we can draw everything here except for a non-white land that will be very helpful. And that guy, that guy's actually awesome. So I got the combination of, of neither rail and query and good old uh, and Mary Angel. Just don't kill it. Don't be a dick here. Okay, that's fine. I still don't think it's worth burning those guys. I think we're in okay 
life total takes us down to 13. Rather burn something that's a more of a threat like that, bait of the living. Get rid of it. So this puts it into play, right? So we can just go tap, 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 sack of forest. Oops, I, I tapped one too many. Put a brush land? No, I think just a regular old plains is better. Yeah, that was stupid. I'm, I'm overpaying here. And that way we can throw out the Merry Angel. Maybe, maybe Shriek Maya is something we can get rid of here. No, I didn't. We'll just that mana is insignificant. So one card in hand versus one card in hand. Come on, Skull Clamp. And don't don't kill my knight. Factor fiction, okay. Great card. I'm not worried about bribery at this point. So what does Moldraf do? And draw two cards. Sack a creature, return recurring knight, return to a creature card from your graveyard to battlefield I'd rather I'd rather have him have all that crap. I don't want him having that recurring nightmare. But a mana leak is pretty bad to have too. So maybe Mulder, oh man. Uh, let's go like that, see what he takes. Yeah, I thought he was going to take that. This has got a mana leak. And Recurring Nightmare. Sacrifice creature return to creature from a graveyard to the battlefield. Anytime you can set. Holy stupid. Okay. Let's see what he does. So he gets the Mole Drifter. Okay. Not a big deal. Now do we kill that? Where does Recurring Nightmare go? Sacrifice a creature, return to Recurring Nightmare to its owner's hand. Huh. Okay. He's able to... Oh man, he's got such a good combo out. And that's a bad card to get. So, I guess we just attack with the Mary. Oh wow! I just oh no, I didn't skip my skip my attack phase. Attack with the Mary Angel. We're just gonna try to overwhelm him here. Play a land or elf. Yeah, kind of sucks. Um. The only thing that's be able to get us out of this is a skull clamp. I don't want that Shriek Maw going to the graveyard. But I mean, he can just Bane here. So he's going to cast it again. No, he can't. Bane doesn't work with it. Dark creatures are. Drugged. Okay, fine. And we're down to five minutes. I might even time myself if I don't play quicker. So Consecrated Sphinx is going to come back into play here. He's going to he's going to sac he's going to sacrifice his Mole Drifter for a Consecrated Sphinx.
a shriek ma for for a riftwing clouds okay see what he does here probably gonna bounce bounce my sacred foundry all right we'll float and actually we'll sack it Okay, ultimate price to the Mary Angel, sure. Get Treetop Village to try to kill him off. So Recurring Nightmare is going to come down again for what? A Consecrated Sphinx, which sucks for us, but... Now do we spend our mana? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Tax the Mole Drifter, that's fine. And he's going to sack his Mole Drifter now. He's going to replay Recurring Nightmare to sack his Mole Drifter. Which gets him the Consecrated Sphinx, you would have to think. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna rift bolt his face here. Or do I rift bolt his mole drifter? Oh it's a sorcery anyway. Okay, that's fine. I don't think there's a way for me to get anything in the graveyard. Fauna Shaman is too slow. I should attack the treetop village there as well. Yeah, I could kill off his consecrated sphinx, but it's probably pointless. Yeah, this is game. He's got the recurring nightmare um, combo. Kill off the mole drifter. Wait, he can't. There's one thing he can't sack. And it's probably game. Reoccurring Nightmare. This guy's got a really good deck as well. A lot of control. A lot of control in here. Because he, he reoccurring nightmares for a mole drifter, reoccurring nightmares again for a consecrated, consecrated sphinx. And I guess the right move would, wouldn't be to attack there. I just pump up my Neither Real Inquiry. Only one use now of Recurring Nightmare. I don't know why I played that Grave Robber. It's not that great. Because uh, he could have could have just Consecrated Sphinx into the Shriek Maw and then done it again. The Shriek Maw for the Consecrated uh, Sphinx. But it's, it's game here. I'm just going to concede. There's no point in playing it out. Yeah. Nothing I could have done there. So anyway, that's game number two, or match number two, and we'll go on to the last match. This is Kevin from RogueDecker.com. Thanks for watching.